What's going on everyone? It's your boy Savvy and welcome back to the Savvy Show. And in today's episode, I'm excited to bring you guys another non-animation reaction on the channel. Guys, this is something that I really wanted to dive deep and it looks really interesting before I actually got into the non-animation reactions. This was on the old list and it's time for us to dive deep. So yo, with that all out the way, this is SCP-2718. What happens after? And the cool thing about this SCP is I believe this is more so like a concept maybe than an actual entity because around this scp i believe it's literally the afterlife what happens after like what happens death guys i'm excited i want to see what they're going to do what kind of spin they're going to put on this scp for it to make it the way it is now how strong would it be if it is an actual entity or you know a belief system who knows but I know one thing we want to find out today. So without all out the way, if you guys are excited for this reaction, please remember to smash that like button. Like always on these non-animation reactions, let's hit that button, guys. It will show me that you guys want to see more. That's why there's been more animations because it seems like you guys don't want to see as much compared to my animation reactions I do. So if you guys do like these non-animation reactions, smash that button. Let's just try to get 50 likes on this one. Nothing too crazy. Nothing little gazy. Let's get it done, guys. And also smash that sub button and hit that bell so you can always stay plugged with each and every upload. And without any further ado, let's not waste any more time. Let's get this show started. Alrighty. SCP-2718. What happens after? Let's go. SCP-2718. What happens after? The concept of the afterlife has plagued humanity since the dawn of time, provoking countless discussions, arguments, and more. The question of what happens when we die is often tied strongly to religion, with answers ranging from eternal paradises to fiery hells or even reincarnation. Mm -hmm. It likely comes as no surprise to you that the SCP universe has delved into the concept of the afterlife in a few different ways. But today, we'll be looking at a particularly grim version of it. Let's 2718 go. definitely starts in an odd way, with the SCP number constantly shifting. What the hell? The object class listing an error, and the first line what kind of, of the class is that? procedures actually describes the SCP itself. We see that SCP-2718 is a Damaroon class. Damaroon? That's a class? A cognito hazard is any sort of mimetic effect mimetic that can effect. alter an individual's way of thinking. Dammerung is a German word meaning dusk or twilight. And as far as I'm aware, That's this a is cool the class. only SCP that carries that classification. This SCP is literally, literally in a class of its own. Dammerung class, which is German for twilight, dusk? Yo, what? Oh, okay, this is already getting spicy, and we're not even two minutes in. Okay, let's keep it pushing, guys. The containment protocols go on to say how forbidden 2718 is, and it's only by extreme forbidden. chance that we've stumbled upon its report at all. It says that this report cannot be deleted or effectively redacted by any means due to the clearance level of the original author, suggesting an 05, and basically says if we close the article now, report it and get immediate amnestic treatment <laughs> no disciplinary action will be necessary bro no of course we read on and the following section contains orders for any agent sent to handle this breach of scp 2718 basically since this report is about a very dangerous cognito hazard that affects anyone who reads about it and the scp foundation can't delete redact or restrict access to it normally Affects anyone who reads about it. Is a cognito hazard? So do they pretty much die after reading the file of this SCP? Do they get sent to the afterlife? What, like, how does that... And how would they get knowledge of the afterlife unless they go die and experience the afterlife? Cognito hazard. I, they need to break that down. They have to find a workaround to conceal it. I'll spare you the technical details and summarize. Essentially, they are exploiting a weakness in their databases by constantly switching the designation of the article with another random one. Oh. This is responsible for the weird numbering a of random the article, article okay. and causes links to 2718 to disappear. 
By doing so, and drawing out the process using intentionally bad algorithms, 2718 is almost always hidden from view. But there is a very small window when the process ends and before it restarts, when it becomes momentarily visible. Oh. This, of course, allows someone browsing the database to see 2718 and click on it. That one moment, though? presented with a severe warning. How long is that gap between time for someone to actually be able to look at it and click on it? I mean, they make it seem like it's such a small um, window. So if someone's actually making that window, they're either intentionally trying to access this or they're just completely lucky or unlucky <laughs> in this SCP's, you know, situation. So let, let's see. This is currently the Foundation's best way of containing 2718 as it's a very small chance that someone will happen to see 2718 in the database and proceed to read past the warnings. Of course, since we as readers always have access to each SCP, this explanation is just for the sake of the story. The agent working on the terminal that accessed the page then has a unique job, because due to amnestics wiping people's memory, no living person has knowledge of 2718 other than them. Their task is to improve the containment protocols of 2718 in any way they can before their memories are wiped, and 2718 goes back to being completely unknown again. What? Unfortunately, the agents sent to respond to a 2718 breach are left unprepared for this task. And What's actually breaching? Like, I, I want to know what this cognito hazard is. Who is this dude that's in a class of its own? Damn Moore class. Like, yo, if it is even a dude, it could be just a concept, but let's, let's go now. have only two hours to work on it. <clears throat> a log left by one of these agents it's mentions Odell. that if an agent <laughs> fails to complete their task within two hours or upon return they still remember the current year or name of the current president, they are to be terminated. This suggests that the amnestic given to those who work on 2718 is a massive one. The log- Massive indeed, they're getting terminated. You're not wiping their memory. What? If they remember the year and the president, you're gonna get terminated if you don't complete it under two hours? Yeah, this is why I wouldn't want to work for the foundation. <laughs> Literally, oh my god. With the agent saying that he was curious and figured his brain was hosed anyways, so he read 2718's description. <laughs> Idiot. He says to resist the urge and hopes that the amnestic kicks in quickly. So far then, we really know practically nothing about 2718 itself. Pretty much. Other than it's a cognito hazard that no one wants anyone to read about in any way but they can't get rid of the documentation. Hmm. After doing so much teasing, we finally get into the meat of the article, where we get to find out exactly what 2718 is. Yes. This information comes from a transcribed audio recording made by a member of the O5 Council named Miriam Prather. I haven't heard Miriam that name. starts by telling a technician to make this article a permanent record, allowing no one to ever tamper with it saying that if there's only one article left in the whole database, let it be this one. Yo, there's a lot of SCPs out there. And for her to say specifically, if there's only one article left, let it be this one. This one has to be something serious. It's already in a class of its own, which is literally crazy. Because I never even heard of this class. I didn't even know if it was a thing. And it's not even on the wiki website about, you know, all the classes at all. So this was hidden within the freaking foundation files. Online, like, <laughs> so let's see. Miriam seems rushed for time and even lets the technician keep her security credentials as she says she won't be needing them. She then proceeds to begin her story, stating that she has been 05 7 for 77 years, Ooh. but she'll only remain so for about seven more minutes. What? She goes on to discuss the various methods available to the SCP Foundation to bring someone back from death. Each method is different, of course, but they fall into two categories. What? One, making a copy or clone of the person from when they were still alive. Yeah. And two, turning back time, undoing the events that killed them. While these methods are, of course, vastly different, they do share a similarity in that the person brought back has no memory of their death or what comes after. What? In fact, the SCP Foundation has no first-hand testimony of someone dying and reporting on the afterlife. 
This is like similar to um, SCP, I believe it was 2000 DX Machina, where you could like come back with like a clone of yourself. Not like really getting like reanimated though. So, and you don't have any memory. So I wonder if it's like something similar to that. This is getting really juicy. Or lack thereof. Until now, of course. Six months ago, the Foundation resurrected one of the O5s named Roger using a new procedure. Roger was different than the other O5s in two major ways. Let's see. One, being that he didn't use anomalous means to extend his life. Oh. And two, that he took his vacations unannounced and in solitude. What well, makes sense he was dead. <laughs> due to these two factors, Roger died at age 73 due to a stroke while alone on an island 18 years ago. 18 he was... 14 years to find his body. What? Which they needed due to a physical key he had as well as a mental key only he knew. A mental key, a physical key he had on his body? What the heck? That's kind of crazy. I'm, I'm more intrigued about the mental key. And also, why did it take him 18 years to find his body? What? The combination of island weather, creatures, and time had reduced Roger's body to a pile of bone fragments. Yeah. And so their usual methods of bringing people back were useless. Since they only needed one word from him, they figured they could use the new method to bring him back just long enough for him to utter it. Is this where but SCP they comes in? But themselves, perfectly reanimating Roger. Roger returned by uncontrollably sobbing for half an hour, followed by exhibiting constant signs of joy and relief. What? They kept him quarantined for 30 days, during which he cooperated completely, and so they restored him to his position on the council. He returned to the job with renewed vigor, wisdom, and insight, and began utilizing supplements to extend his life. Now he wants to use supplements to extend his life. So, I mean, when he gets resurrected, is he back to the age he died at? Because now he's bones, you know? It's not like he was 70-whatever when he died. And it makes sense he doesn't have, like, any immortality because he's trying to extend his life. And why is he so happy? He's been 18 years. Probably all your loved ones are, like, really old or gone. Who knows? Additionally, he began to show a greater interest in the Foundation's safety protocols and developed a profound distaste for sacrificing D-Class on projects. Oh. Although the O5 Council did not think anything greatly unusual Ooh, that about this is, pattern of changes... That is interesting. That's such a big change. This, dude's, what, this dude was dead for God knows how long. Oh, wait, we do know. 18 years. And literally, he has a problem with D-Classes now. And you know what happens to D-Class is most of the time they die. The afterlife is probably something crazy. It's probably something gruesome. He doesn't want them to suffer the fate that he suffered for past 18 years. And this is his way of, you know, probably going about it. He might not be able to talk about it, but... <sighs> wow, this is, this is a lot of info. You can likely see where this is heading. Yeah. In their interviews with Roger, he claimed that he remembered nothing of the afterlife cleanly passing all of their polygraph tests. Roger began looking into immortality, but according to Miriam, due to quantum uncertainty, even the SCP Foundation haven't found a way to accomplish that. Hmm. Fox Strongly youth? disappointed by this information, Roger broke protocol and made direct contact with an apex-tier pluripotent entity contained by the Foundation. Ape. Boom. My mind's gone. Apex tier play. What? What? What did he make contact with? Oh my god. And found a way to accomplish that. Strongly disappointed by this information, Roger broke protocol and made direct contact with an apex tier pluripotent apex? entity. Pluripotent? Who is this? These entities are implied to be the strongest reality benders known to the Foundation. Roger covered his tracks well, so no one knew for some time that he had done so. But eventually the council learned about it, believing that Roger wished to make a deal of some kind with this entity. That brings us to the present time of Miriam recording this. As earlier that day, she and another O5 member confronted Roger privately, and he confessed everything. Uh oh. She replays an audio recording she made of Roger's confession. And we finally get to learn about SCP-2718. Yes, let's go. I think it's best if I read parts of this verbatim. Is he the reality bender? 
I dared not speak of this at first. You'd never have let me out of containment. The truth is, I was aware of all of it. I suppose there was a sweet oblivion, like deep sleep at first. But in retrospect, I think it was no more than a day. Slowly, but unmistakably, I reoccupied my corpse with dreamlike consciousness, numb for the first merciful hours, blind, deaf, and immobile. But then I seemed to reconnect to every nerve and became aware of every sensation. This is Roger? More so than I ever was in life. I perceived myself trapped within an immovable object, and the intensity of the struggle amplified. Subtle, then acute, then racking. I cannot describe it completely, but imagine holding your breath beyond urge, beyond pain, beyond desperation, head throbbing and eyes bulging, a dream of suffocation without end. My skin blistered and split in the sunlight, biting insects descended rapidly. I felt eggs hatch, larvae crawl, gases build and burst within me, individual fuck? cells rupturing, interstitial fluids souring and blackening. Is this hell? Somehow my capacity to experience and store these sensations grew, even as I was keenly aware of my cerebrum being scattered and devoured. My perception expanded into the gizzards of birds and the depths of fire ant dens. I was aware of every fingernail and strand of hair that pulled away in the wind, and my sensation clung to them as they settled in the ocean and dissolved in the maws of a trillion diatoms. He goes on to say that his capacity for pain continued to grow rather than numb, intensifying every second, month, and year. He says that although in life he imagined hell to be quite horrible, there would surely at least be a tormentor and some sense of justice. Yeah. Whereas this was illogical torment. So is this Roger? He says, I do not think this is a punishment. I do not think it is caused. I deeply suspect it is simply our condition, our nature to go on this way. Do you see? In all that time, I was certainly, absolutely, totally alone and before long all memory of life had shriveled to a cinder Dang. lost beneath my interminable anguish alive again i suspect i cannot quite recall the worst of it as if my living brain is too small for the experience so this is roger he admits that he went to the entity for help in making him immortal as he refuses to return to that afterlife <laughs> he concludes Real. that this fate awaits everyone who dies and he'll do anything to avoid it. That makes sense. Asking Miriam and the other O5 to join him. Yeah, but aren't the other O5s immortal too? They made a deal with death? Like, uh, I, I can't really think about like one story being canon for all the other stories. Because all other SCP stories are kind of different. But still, they should have the re access to at least drink the Fountain of Youth, right? Like, that could extend your life. And you're, you're part of the council. You should know that. Miriam was dumbfounded, sympathetic, and most importantly, fearful. They called an emergency session of the council to share this information, and Roger gave his testimony again. Much of the council reacted calmly and with concern, but one stated that they must declare human death as a Keter class SCP. Keter class? The council fell into a human shouting death? match as Roger began sharing even darker details of his experience and a few members moved to begin terminating dangerous SCPs to protect humanity. Here, Miriam mentions that the O5s became convinced one after another, and she wonders to herself if belief is the key. O5-1 then silenced the room, saying that the council has lost all reason and with only one possible explanation. Oh God. The entire council would be given amnestics, except for Roger, who would be placed back in containment. What? Roger bolted out of the room before the doors could be sealed. For real? I'm out of there. Are you kidding me? Y'all going to contain me when I was contained in hell for God knows 18 years? 18 years by myself? Really? Just because he was telling you guys the truth about what's going on, y'all going to contain him. Wow. And Miriam chased after him to stop him, but immediately regretted her decision. 
Wow. She desperately wanted the amnestic. Since Miriam now knows her fate is sealed, she had this article created and made it permanent so that knowledge of 2718 wouldn't be forgotten. And she would be hopefully brought back from the afterlife that awaits her. Wait, how does she die? Like, is she... We don't know his powers, though, so... Why is it completely over when she was chasing after Roger? If you touch him, is he dead? Like, the plague doctor or something? Like, what's going on here? Am I missing something? I must be, because... Why... Why are your fate already so for sure? Like, why do you think that? The door suddenly bursts open, and gunfire erupts, leaving Miriam dead. Oh, they we shot MTF her. We hear discuss a breach of a Ketter's SCP in another compound, where SCP-106 is contained. Rather than 106 escaping, is that the it old seems man? that Roger intentionally went into 106's containment, a fate considered by most to be worse than death, but perhaps it's better than SCP-2718. So that's the afterlife in the SCP universe then. Whenever anyone dies, they'll slowly experience the pain of their body decaying for all time. Wow. Right? Well, no, as we have to put the pieces of the puzzle together, starting with one of the first lines of the article. Okay. SCP-2718 is a cognitohazard, meaning it affects your mind and way of thinking. Okay. This ties in with Miriam's statement of belief being the key and why she was so regretful of not breathing in the amnestics. Uh... It's not that she wanted to live without the fear of knowing what the afterlife was. It was that she wanted to erase the cognito hazard. Basically, if you have knowledge of SCP-2718 and believe it, you are then affected by it, and it becomes your afterlife. Not only that, but it actively changes your way of thinking so that you firmly believe this is the true afterlife awaiting everyone, not just those familiar with 2718. Wow. This has inevitably resulted in the spread of 2718, both in Roger confessing the story to the council, yeah. as well as Miriam making the report on it permanent. Basically contaminated them. 2718 is certainly one of the more horrific SCPs on the Oh wing. my god. Less so because of some terrible disease or monster. That's dangerous. But because it plays on the existential dread felt by many humans since the dawn of time. So when you get knowledge of this since it's a cognito hazard, are you actually going to that state? Or are you like under some kind of genjutsu where you're getting like tortured and everything like what happened to Roger? Because you know Roger was actually dead and he was, you know... In the afterlife, and he got knowledge of this, and he brought it back, and it became like a cognito hazard because it came, you know, to our plane of existence. But if someone hears about that, like you know, Mariel, if she didn't get shot and she has memory about it, is she just experiencing it while she's still alive, or does she like die instantly and then she's in, trapped in this genjutsu forever? And that's what her afterlife is. That becomes her afterlife because she believes it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, because that is really interesting, and I really want to know what you guys' spin on this, but let's wrap it up. It's unclear why Roger experienced 2718 in the first place, and who's to say that the idea of it being a cognito hazard isn't just a lie? SCP-2718 is an odd SCP article since it really more fits the format of a tale, but it is definitely an effective one at evoking horror. Oh, yeah. You're right. Is it over? Okay. As overseers, we witness, inflict, or endure great suffering, yet what awaits us all is worse. The way an earache is worse than a beasting. The way frostbite is worse than a burn. I was dead for 18 years, and my misery eludes description. Dare we try to fathom the collective agony of legions of ancient dead? Whoa. This is Roger speaking about his time in the afterlife. Is there any more? Oh, that's it. Yo. This was good. This is top five for me. Top five for me, yes indeed, guys. This is uh, this is some cool. This is really cool. Um, I didn't expect so much more of how it is, per se. And all the things coming with it. 
a O5 council member died and became a freaking came back to life and that, that, I never would expect someone from the council being part of this but that's the case and it being a damn moon class a class of its own a cognito hazard bro bro this was crazy this is crazy literally with that all the way like I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction as much as I enjoyed reacting to it if you guys did please remember to smash that like button also, smash the sub button, join the family, and hit that bell so you always stay plugged with each and every upload. And with that being said, unfortunately, that concludes today's episode. However, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Saying bad to all the lies and all the times you cried. Saying that I wasn't right, that I was right by your side. You manipulator, playing games, your friends commentators. And I don't know what you say about our private conversations, but...